Calorimeter problems. When we do calorimetry problems, we generally use the heat equation and we use it twice. Usually you calculate the amount of energy absorbed by the water first, and then that energy is used in the heat equation again, and you solve for what you need for the second part. You have to be very careful when you use the two heat equations that you keep all the water terms, in other words, the grams of water, the delta T of the water, and specific heat of the water with the heat equation that you use for the water, and all the other parts you use with the second one. So let's work an example. Problem 84 on page 77 says a 125 gram piece of metal is heated to 288 degrees Celsius and dropped into 85.0 grams of water at 26.0 degrees Celsius. If the final temperature of the metal and the water is 58.0 degrees Celsius, what is the specific heat in joules per gram degree Celsius of the metal? Now first off, we're going to do two heat equations, and the first, first one we're going to do is for the water, and the second one we're going to do is for the metal. Now how do we know we want to do the second one for the metal? Because we're being asked a question about the metal. So first off, let's just go ahead and write down the heat equation. It's heat is grams delta T times the specific heat. Now let's go ahead and plug in our numbers for the water. And so we say grams. Now this is for the water only. So grams, we've got to find the grams of water. It's not 125 because that's for the metal. It's 85.0 grams for water. So 85.0 grams. Now we need the delta T for the water. We have to be very careful that we don't use the terms for the metal. It's 288 degrees Celsius. That's for the metal. And there's the water that we're starting out with. So let's go ahead and do delta T for the water. And that's uh, 58 degrees. See, water is 58 degrees minus 26. And that is 59 degrees. It is 58 minus 26. And that is 32 degrees Celsius. And now we can go ahead and put that in here. And the specific heat of water, if we go look it up or if we remember, it's 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And we get an answer here. We'll go 85 times 32 times 4.184. And that gives me 11,380 joules. That is the heat absorbed by the water. Now, the heat absorbed by the water is exactly the same as the heat lost by the metal. And so now we want to find the specific heat of the metal. And if we rearrange our heat equation once again, we write it down, this time just for the metal, and solve for specific heat. Specific heat is equal to the heat divided by the grams of the metal times the delta T of the metal. And so what is the heat lost by the metal? Well, it was the same as the heat gained by the water that we just calculated, so 11,380 joules. And we need to find the grams of the metal and there it is, a 125 gram piece of metal. And we need the delta T for the metal. Now the final temperature of the metal and water is always exactly the same. And so there's 58 degrees, but the, but the metal was heated up to a pretty hot temperature of 288. So delta T for the metal is 288 degrees Celsius minus the final temperature, which is 58.0 degrees Celsius. 288 minus 58, and I get 230 degrees Celsius for our delta T for the metal. And finally, we're done. We can go ahead and calculate our specific heat for the metal. 11,380 divided by parentheses, 125 times 230, close parentheses, and I get 0.396 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So to recap, we were very careful to do two heat equations and we kept all the terms separate from each other. So that 
first heat equation, that was the heat equation for the water. We have grams of the water, we have delta T for the water, and we have a specific heat for the water, so we have the heat absorbed by the water. And we had to come back and do it all over again, but this time for the metal, keeping in mind that the heat absorbed by the water is exactly the same as the heat lost by the metal, rearrange our equation for specific heat, and we get the heat lost by the metal, the grams of the metal, and delta T for the metal, and that gives us our final answer. Sometimes we're asked a calorimetry problem where something is burned, typically a food, and we want to know what the energy value or the food value is, and this should be a giveaway right here, kcals per gram. The grams, or kilojoules per gram, the grams is the amount of the sample that you burned. When you have a problem that's asking you the questions in kcals per gram, whatever you do, don't calculate a specific heat for the stuff that's being burned. It is merely providing energy to raise the water temperature in the calorimeter. So, we'll only have to use the heat equation once, and it will be for the calorimeter. So let's go ahead and write it down. Heat is equal to grams, delta T, specific heat, and how many grams do we have of water? 370 grams of water. What's our delta T for the water? And notice there is only one delta T here. That should also tell you you're not going to calculate the specific heat for the olive oil. So we have a delta T is 38.8 degrees Celsius minus 22.7 degrees Celsius. And we'll go ahead and calculate that out first. 38.8 minus 22.7 and I get 16.1 degrees Celsius so we'll go ahead and put this up into our heat equation and finally this the specific heat of water we'll do the kcals so it is one calorie per gram degrees Celsius and go ahead and solve it out and we go 370 times 16.1 and I get 59.57 calories. I'm going to go ahead and transfer this down here so the heat is equal to 59.57 calories and we can go ahead and convert that to joules first and so why don't we go ahead and do that so we'll say times 4.184 joules for every calorie Let's see, we got 59.57 times 4.184, and I get 24.924 joules. Now notice, we're being asked for kilocalories and kilojoules. These are in calories and joules. That's what our heat equation gives us. But we can easily turn these into kcals and kilojoules by recognizing that there are a thousand calories in a kilocalorie and there's a thousand joules in a kilojoule. So the first one, we'll just go ahead and do our calories and we say calories times one kcal, which is a dietary calorie, per 1,000 calories and it is 5.957 kilocalories. And we'll go ahead and divide that by the grams of our sample because we want kilocalories per gram so we'll divide by grams and that's 0 0.660 grams and this will give us our first answer 59.57 divided by a thousand and then we're going to take that 59.57 and divide it by 0 0.66 and I get 9.0 kcals per gram which is an interesting number because if you if you remember the food values uh, fats have nine kcals per gram and sure enough we got nine kcals per gram because that's in fact is what olive oil is is a fat and let's go ahead and do it for our joules and so we take our answer over here that was in joules 24,924 joules and it's one kilojoule is a thousand joules because there's 1,000 joules for every kilojoule and then we'll go ahead and get our answer which is 24.924 kilojoules and to also divide it by the number of grams so that we have kilojoules per gram kilojoules per gram just like what we're being asked for up there 
and we got 24.924 divided by 0.66 and I get 37 0.8 kilojoules per gram.